The initial list price of your home, so the price that it comes on at the market that very first day, is one of the best marketing tools you have to sell your house the fastest and to make yourself the most money. We were able to recently help a seller over in Vista, and here's how it went. So our seller had this property for a while as a rental, so there was a few issues with it. Before we put it on the market, he was able to spruce it up, take care of some bigger items, new flooring, new paint, redo some parts of the kitchen, and just make it market ready. So that's one of the best things you can also do is home preparation. But getting back to pricing, during our initial conversations, we're running something called comps. So comparable sales within that zone. So what are comps or comparable sales? Any home that is basically kind of the same condition, maybe the same year, the same size, in this case, the same square footage of the lot because it was a larger lot right around or right above about a half acre. So taking those all into account within the same city. So we did a certain radius around this area of Vista, came up with the most recent comps, and this is a few months before we actually put it on the market. So our job as real estate agents is to help guide you through the process, provide you the most relevant information so that you can make the best decisions because ultimately as a seller, you are gonna be the one making the decisions, setting that initial list price, and we're just here to guide you through the entire process. So. During our conversations of what we think the home may sell for, we came up with a kind of a range of pricing. Our seller initially, when we sat down, signed the listing agreement at $879,000. And one thing about that initial price, that could be changed all the way up until you first put the home on the market. There are certain ways to go about it, certain strategies to help yourself, put yourself in the best position to make the most money and sell it in the quickest time or the timeline that works for you. Now, why is that initial list price so important? Because right off the bat, if I'm bring up a chart right here, there is a certain time frame, usually that first two weeks, where anybody who has that search saved, they're gonna get pinged. So, and this is the, also the time that they're gonna be most interested, the most people. So those first two weeks, you're gonna get the most interest in your property. As time goes on, not only are you going to get less, less interest, but people just psychologically are thinking, what's wrong with the property? If most homes in, the, in the, that neighborhood are selling within, let's say, 15 to 30 days, uh, any homes, you know, sitting in that 30 to 45 days and beyond, people are like, okay, what's wrong with the property? Even though there might not be anything wrong with the property, it's just perceived that there could potentially be something wrong with the property. So I'll show you the chart, how this property went. So as we're doing final preparations, getting everything ready, getting all pictures, getting all that promotion and then all the materials that we need as real estate agents to help market the property ready, there is a little bit of a gap between our initial meeting when we set that list price with our client and when we're gonna go live on the market. So we reassess, we're gonna say, okay, we still think it's right around here, give them a new comparable sales, anything has sold in the time frame that we last met until now. So just keep it as up to date as possible. And it's not only homes that have sold, we're taking into account also homes that are currently under contract, maybe have conversations with those agents, see how busy they were, see how many offers they got, etc. And also active properties will give you a clue about, okay, where should price be? This home's been on the market for 45 days and they've had two price reductions what's going on, where was the price at, where did it start, where is it at now? So the solds are the best reliable source because those have sold, those have closed, and the closer to when you're actually listing the property, the best, because it's gonna give you the best, most up-to-date information on what the potential current price of your home should be. So as we get closer to putting the home on the market, our seller wants to potentially test a higher price a little bit. They want to list it around that $915,000 mark. Now our comparable sales, everything that's pointing to what we think the price of the home should be is still right in that $880,000 range. Like I said, ultimately the seller is gonna be listing the home at what they want to list it at. It's their property and you can't blame them. They want the most money for their home. Now going over what the potential recent sales are going is not always the best strategy because buyers out there, they're seeing all these properties too have recently sold and what's going on with all the data out there, they have usually a good idea, especially if they have a good real estate agent, helping them through the process and let them know, ooh, that property might be a little bit overpriced, maybe we go in at this amount, maybe it's less, maybe it's less than the initial list price that you were gonna come on it. So we have the conversation with the seller 
and we're able to guide her to a initial listing price of $898,000. So we think it's still a little bit high, but it's within range where we're still gonna get that initial jump. We're still gonna get initially a lot of people through there. So we do list the property. It comes on at $898,000. And sure enough, here's that chart again. Here's everything from all the apps and everywhere it blasts out to. So you can see the initial bump was pretty high. That first weekend, that first two weeks, there was a lot of interest. There was a lot of people through. We had the open house. This is where we're sending out all of our marketing materials. Obviously a lot of the online sites, that's where you're gonna get a lot of eyeballs. So you're gonna wanna make sure the pictures are dialed in. You're gonna wanna make sure that you have everything you can. We're doing videos. We're doing 3D Matterport tours to give potential buyers everything they need to get them out to the property to ultimately write an offer. To add some additional fuel to the fire, we're running ads on YouTube. We're running ads on Facebook. We're doing Instagram posts, kind of all the organic stuff as well. Like I said, more eyeballs, the better. The open house, we had about 15 groups through and we were able to generate two offers. One was pretty darn low from an investor and one was fairly close, but our seller wasn't ready to take that offer right now. So now we're a few weeks into the process. The showings have slowed down a little bit. Interest rates are going up. So the market's shifting a little bit from where we were. And during this whole time, we're keeping up with our seller, let her know what showings are going on, what we're doing, what's going on. Like give her a, basically a report card every single week of what's happening with the property. So they are staying well in tune with exactly what's going on. Now, most homes in this market are selling within probably about 30 to 35 days. So we're having this conversations about a few weeks after that, you know, the time frame that most homes have sold in this current market. And we decide with our seller that it's time for a price reduction. So we go back to a price that the initial conversation we had was $879,000. Now we're right in that ballpark. And with this price reduction, also, anybody who had saved the property, you can see it right here in this chart, you get another little bump up because anything that had saved it or any of the search sites that somebody showed interest in this property, they're gonna get pinged again. Hey, this property had a price reduction. So during this time, we get a little bump in showings. We are getting offered. We get another offer. It was a very low cash offer. Our seller said, no, thanks. Now we get about five days later, a very strong offer with a quick close, all the timeline, timelines that they were looking for. And the price is actually a little bit above that $879,000 mark. Now coming back to that initial conversation we had about how pricing your home is one of the most important marketing tools you have. You really, especially coming into the market that we're going into, if you overprice a home, like I mentioned, buyers are gonna notice. Now that you got, might get people going through there, you might get people looking, but the most important thing is for you to sell your house and get offers in. Now, if the strategies, there's a few, you go price it a little bit low, right at what you think it might go at or a little bit above. That little bit above, even in this case, even though it was a little tiny bit above, it did sit for longer and you can't blame the seller. They want the most money for their property. So listing it a little bit higher might think, well, Let's get it at that price or leave some negotiation room. And really every situation is different. Even us as real estate agents, I've seen some real estate agents overprice their home because they're in the same mindset, that seller mindset, the seller psychology. Obviously you want to have the most money in your pocket, but ultimately the buyers out there, like I said, are gonna determine what the value of your home is. And so that initial launch price, that initial list price is crazy important, especially like a, as we were a few years ago, you could list a home at whatever price you wanted. Well, not whatever, but you, there was no, you didn't necessarily have to be so strategic and so pinpoint accurate on what you list your home because there was enough buyers out there where you're gonna get multiple offers pretty much no matter what. And with multiple offers, even in this strategy, let's say you priced it a little bit under and you got two or three offers, definitely better than one offer because then you can have some competition the buyers are potentially gonna bid against each other, driving the price above where you expected the price to even go. Because once you get into that situation, there is some competitive nature, people want the home, they're gonna go a little bit above and beyond what you might expect when trying to purchase your home. That's why I believe that pricing your home properly right off the bat is the best strategy for netting you the most money and putting it on a timeline, the best timeline, that works for you. And every situation is different, every neighborhood is different, every 
particular house is different. So if you guys wanna start that conversation, all of our information is below. Be sure to reach out, never too early to start that conversation, even if it's next year sometime, doesn't really matter. Hit us up. I'm Chris Erickson with the Beach Life Group, and we got your back when making the move here in San Diego. Bye.